As an entrepreneur that didn't do enough homework on some stuff, I was not well prepared to some of the engagements I had. You can so easily make mistakes when you go and try to work with, with companies that are cross-border, different places. Many times made the mistake that many entrepreneurs do, I didn't listen enough, and I was sure that I know all the answers. Hello, I'm joined by Zach Weisfeld, who runs Microsoft uh, Ventures globally. Zach, thank you very much for speaking with us. So, you be, you're based in Tel Aviv, and it's obviously a hotbed of innovation and excitement in many ways for startups. So, what's the one reason you uh, are there, and what are you enjoying most about being there right now? So, um, Israel is a hotbed of technology, and it's a great place for entrepreneurs uh, for many, many reasons. Um, and uh, being part of such a thriving ecosystem, and actually taking a lot of the learnings from the uh, Israel ecosystem and uh, try to implement and help other ecosystems thrive mm -hmm. the way that it's, it's there is, is a big thing that I really enjoy. So what are the two or three things that you feel are the most critical to the success that you've seen in Israel and you're trying to now transport them elsewhere? So, you know, many people ask me, so what are the, you know, mm. What is it that makes the startup ecosystem in Israel so successful? And what, is, what makes it a startup nation? Yes, yeah. what makes it a startup nation? So there are, there are many things. So yeah. you know, when you look at the thriving, successful ecosystem, there are the feeders, mm. you know, the universities, the successful startups, the failed startups. Uh, Israel has its, its army and, and mm. um, uh, the unique uh, technology units. Um, and then you need to have enough exit routes, mm. which uh, multinational are, uh, that multinational companies that are looking for uh, acquisitions as well as exit mm. uh, 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 IPO markets. Mm. And then in the middle, there are all these pieces that are super critical for successful startup ecosystems. There are the VCs, the right angel investors, um, the service uh, companies that know how to, to help startups, incubators, accelerators. Um, uh, and there's a whole piece that's hard to copy, which is a culture. Hmm. And you know, people ask me, so what is it if you, one single <laughs> thing that makes the Israeli entrepreneur yeah. pretty unique, and it's, it's something we call it in Hebrew chutzpah, hmm. and it's this, this um, tenacity, this, uh, um, you don't take no as an answer. Hmm. Um, you're, you're, you speak with anyone and everyone that uh, willing or not willing to listen, doesn't matter. Hmm. Uh, um, you know, you don't take, uh, hierarchy is not important. So hmm. you, if, if you're a junior engineer, you five level below the CEO, you'll go and say what you think. And you usually get rewarded for, for doing, doing so. So, um, um, you know, this is part of that culture. You know, say we call our prime minister Bibi hmm. in his first name, not even in first name. It's it's a, a shortcut, hmm. and you know that's part of this culture that hmm. that is very direct mm -hmm. and and very again has this chutzpah in it that that is this unique culture that is hard to copy. Right. Uh, so you've uh, you've been an entrepreneur yourself, and many times. Now, what are the couple of mistakes that you've made that you feel people should know uh, as they embark on their own, or if they've already embarked, then you know. Yeah. So I've made plenty of mistakes, mm. and uh, the the one thing that we usually tell entrepreneurs that mistakes are good, mm. failing is good as mm. long as you learn from it. Mm. Um, I, I think that uh, early on, I as a, as an entrepreneur that didn't do enough homework on some stuff, I was not well prepared to some of the engagements I had, um, especially cross cultural. You can so easily make mistakes when you go and try to work with, with companies that are cross-border, different mm -hmm. places. Uh, that are is not this the product or service that you were selling or is it within the, is creating an organization which was cross-cultural? It's more selling a, okay. selling a, okay. a product mm -hmm. and, and understanding how exactly to talk to people. And, um, you know, I many times made the mistake that many entrepreneurs do. I didn't listen enough and okay. I was sure that I know all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of these things that we work and spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs about um, shut up and listen. Mm. You know, there's so many great things you're going to learn if you know how to ask questions and you don't pitch all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so again, I've, I've, I think I've learned a lot through that process. I'm still learning. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Right. So as Microsoft uh, Global Ventures, what are the things that you're betting on or looking at today or right now and that we might see or experience in coming months and years. Right. So, so uh, Microsoft Ventures is the organization inside Microsoft that deals with uh, helping entrepreneurs mm. wherever they're at mm. around the world be more successful or this window for entrepreneurs uh, inside, um, inside Microsoft. 
And uh, what we find out is a great opportunity is the global entrepreneurship uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. There's so much great entrepreneurship happening outside of the U.S. Not just in, it's not just Silicon Valley. Mm. You know, it's Bangalore, mm. it's Beijing, mm. it's Berlin, it's London, it's Paris, it's many other locations. So, so I think it's it's more about trying to look for these great uh, diamonds in the rough and helping them shine. Um, so it's not just a certain uh, aspect of the market or a certain area. Microsoft deals with so many things. Microsoft is a platform company. Right. And, and we believe that our platform fits so many verticals, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that there's a specific vertical that we're looking at. But anything uh, that's sort of uh, right on your, uh, on your desk right now which interests you yeah. or as a theme? So any, any way that we're today marrying um, IoT, mm -hmm. the data that comes from all these sensors mm -hmm. and the big data analytics and how, how do you tie all of these mm -hmm. together, you know? You take the, the, the inputs coming from the cameras and sensors mm. and what are the great insights you do you, you, you bring from them is, is fascinating to see you know how much can we learn from these um, uh, bridging and building all these things together. I think that's, that's uh, a key to the success today is, is merging all these technologies. Mm -hmm. So it's not a silo. IoT is not just yes. uh, developing mm. sensors and mm. big data is not just crunching numbers. It's mm. how do you, how do you uh, build and bridge these together. Right, and, and, and last question, where's your next accelerator going to come up and which place or which part of the world? It's a good question. I'm not going to commit to right, <laughs> right now. I think we're, we're learning, we're looking at, at uh, which, what are the great hotbeds of, of entrepreneurship that are happening. We're partnering with a lot of accelerators around the world. It's a, it's a fascinating phenomena, the mm. whole uh, um, accelerator phenomena. Uh, we're experimenting with vertical accelerators, so we're running now a, a medical um, cybersecurity and IoT accelerators as well. Mm. So we've, we're learning the space, mm. uh, and again, we're trying to help create great entrepreneurs anywhere and everywhere around the world. That's a good note to end on. Thank you very much, Zach, for speaking Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you.